Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that through our yearly observances of Holy Lent, that we may grow an understanding of the riches hidden in Christ, and by worthy conduct pursue their effects. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. And the Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east, and there he put the man whom he had formed. Out of the ground the Lord God made to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And the Lord God commanded the man, you may eat, freely eat of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall die. Then the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper as his partner. And the man and his wife were both naked and were not ashamed. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other wild animal that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God say, you shall not eat from any tree in the garden. The woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden. But God said, 
You shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the middle of the garden, nor shall you touch it, or you shall die. But the serpent said to the woman, You will not die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate, and she also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made loincloths for themselves. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, just as sin came into the world through one man, and death came through sin, 
so death spread to all people because all have sinned. If because of one man's trespass, death exercised dominion through that one, much more surely will those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness exercise dominion in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. Therefore, just as one man's trespass led to condemnation for all, so one man's act of righteousness leads to justification and life for all people. For just as by one man's disobedience, the many were made sinners, so by the one man's obedience, the many will be made righteous. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. <clears throat> Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He fasted forty days and forty nights, and afterwards he was famished. The tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, Command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down. For it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, Again it is written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again the devil took him to a very high mountain, and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in all their splendor. And he said to him, All these I will give you, if you will fall down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God, and serve him alone. Then the devil left him, and suddenly the angels of God came and waited on him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Oh. 
Once upon a time, four priests were spending a couple of days at the cottage. And in the evening, after a rather strong libation, or three, they decided to share with each other their greatest temptation. The first priest said, well, it's kind of embarrassing, but my big temptation is looking at racy pictures. Once I even bought a copy of Sports Illustrated, the swimsuit edition. My temptation is worse, said the second priest. It's gambling. Last Saturday, instead of working on my homily in the morning, I went to the track and bet on the ponies. I'm afraid that mine is worse still, said the third. I sometimes cannot control the urge to have a drink. I've even gone into the sacristy and raided the altar wine. The last priest remained strangely quiet. Brothers, I hate to say this, he said, but my temptation is perhaps the worst of all because I just love to gossip. And excuse me, but I'm off to make a few phone calls. <laughs> well, the fact is, we all have to face temptations, don't we? So the real question might be this. Why does God even allow the devil to tempt us? It may surprise you to hear, but God uses the devil. After all, the devil is not some independent sovereign power in some way equal to God. At any time, God could defeat and banish Satan but he does not. And why not? Well, because temptation has a purpose in God's plan for us. Now, we might not like it, but God allows the devil to tempt us so that we may gain three very important things. Humility, trust, and strength. When I was a very young man, I remember I was having a pretty good Lent. I'd given up chocolate. I had set aside extra time for prayer and for spiritual reading. And so when I finally got to Holy Week, I was feeling pretty confident as off I went to confession. The priest asked me, how's your Lent going? And so I told him. You sound fairly proud of that, he said. Well, I guess I am, was my honest reply. Remember, never lie in confession. Then let's talk a little bit about your sin of pride, <coughs> was the good man's response. I have to tell you, I went home, I ate a large bar of dark chocolate only to realize yet again that I am nowhere near as strong, nowhere near as faithful as I wish I could be. But this awareness of my own weakness does have its positive side, because it helps me to recognize, it helps me to acknowledge my true self, my very human self. And in the final analysis, that spiritual self-awareness is what is going to make any real improvement possible. In recognizing and in acknowledging our true selves, we have the opportunity, by God's grace, to grow in humility. And that leads us to the second purpose of temptation because it helps us to acknowledge our complete and our utter dependence upon Almighty God. Remember that in response to the devil's three temptations, Jesus says that we do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. 
my brothers and sisters. The plain fact is we need God. Because temptation is a very real and a very clear and present danger. It can bring people to their knees. And we can see the importance of that divine human relationship even in Christ himself. He is, of course, God in human flesh. And yet, as a man, Jesus was required to submit his will totally to the will of the Father. You see, when we surrender to temptation, when we sin, it is because we have chosen to try and go it alone. Please, think about this. Those people who claim to be free, the people that you frequently see on television or on social media, the ones who are most vocal, insisting that they are in full charge of their lives, they can do whatever they want, they can do whatever they choose, free of any constraint or of any moral rectitude. Well, I'm afraid that these are usually the very people who are, in point of fact, the least free from the bondage of sin. Because to resist temptation always, always requires God's help. And it takes humility on our part to ask for that help. But in the end, that is what will lead people to a real and to a true freedom from the sin that can enslave us. The third purpose of temptation is to increase our strength. Because the more frequently we confront temptation and sin and overcome it by aligning ourselves with Christ, then the stronger we will become. In much the same way, when we give in to temptation, we are drained of our strength. Of course, only one man has ever totally resisted temptation. We heard about him in this morning's gospel. But you and I, we are very much like saplings, immature trees that tend to waver back and forth according to which way the wind is blowing. Jesus Christ is like the mighty oak for only he has withstood the full power of temptation during the course of his life, his suffering, and his death. Now, we may very well be weak, but each and every time we choose to stand with Christ, each and every time we resist temptation with the Lord at our side, then we gain power. Of course, that power is not ours alone, because ultimately it comes from God. So then, in the final analysis, what do we know for certain? We know that God allows the devil to tempt us only so that we may gain humility, trust and strength and thereby become his faithful people and in so doing become really and truly free. My friends, let us join Jesus who told Satan in response to his final temptation, worship the Lord your God, serve only him. I cannot think of better advice or of better company to keep during the next 40 days and 40 nights. And you?
Together, let us profess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. In the spirit of Jesus, who offered fervent prayer to his Father in the desert, let us call upon mighty God in all our needs. We pray that all leaders of the Church will heed the voice of God's Son in their work of bringing the good news of God's mercy to all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray that all those preparing for the sacraments of initiation this Easter will be filled with faith and love, especially our catechumens and candidates in this parish. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray that all Christians will listen to God's beloved Son, calling them away from a lukewarm spirit and to the full joy of the gospel. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for peace in Ukraine, that the people will be blessed and protected, and that our brothers and sisters will know the holy protection of the Mother of God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray that the church in our country may work for peace and justice, especially with our indigenous brothers and sisters, and with all who have suffered injustice. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray that all those who are sick and suffering, especially the suffering members of our parish family, that they may know the Lord's comfort and consolation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray that the faithful departed will be called home to God's eternal kingdom, especially those who have died in war. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us seek the intercession of our Blessed Mother, Our Lady of Sorrows, who stood faithfully by the cross of her Son as we pray together. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. The offertory hymn is number 367, O Lord, throughout these 40 days. Number 367.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. Give us the right dispositions, O Lord, we pray, to make these offerings, for with them we celebrate the beginning of this venerable and sacred time. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord. Consecrated through his fast, the pattern of our Lenten observance. And by overturning all the snares of the ancient serpent, taught us to cast out the leaven of malice. So that Celebrating worthily the Paschal mystery, we might pass over at last to the eternal Paschal feast. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. at work, that the human race may become holy, just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray, upon your people's offering, and pour out on them the power of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost, and could not approach you. You loved us with the greatest love. For your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, 
In giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice, filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. We celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead, and looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you have united to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that, by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ, who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis our Pope and Douglas our Bishop, and me, your unworthy servant. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom, until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven with blessed virgin with the blessed virgin mary mother of god the blessed apostles and all the saints and with our deceased brothers and sisters whom we humbly commend to your mercy then freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of christ who lives for all eternity Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever. Forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace.
hymn number 610, 610.
you don't. Let us pray. Renewed now with heavenly bread, by which faith is nourished, hope increased, and charity strengthened. We pray, O Lord, that we may learn to hunger for Christ, the true and living bread, and strive to live by every word which proceeds from your mouth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a couple of announcements today. First of all, a big thank you to His Excellency Bishop Lobsinger for being here with us and celebrating the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass for us. Uh, His Excellency is actually here today for the Rite of Election, which will be happening in about an hour. And so please keep the catechumens from this part of the diocese who will become among the elect preparing for baptism at Easter in your prayers. Also, uh, congratulations and welcome to our newest altar server, uh, Stephen Tierney. It's not often that someone gets thrown in the deep end the very first time they serve, serving a pontifical solemn mass. <laughs> well done, Stephen. Very good job. Reminder that there are extra times for daily mass throughout the season of Lent, if you would like to make coming to daily mass part of your Lenten practice. There is Mass at 12.15 on Wednesdays and Fridays, Mass at 7 p.m. on Tuesdays in addition to the morning Mass, and Mass at 9 o'clock each Saturday morning of Lent. Stations of the Cross are celebrated Friday after the 9 o'clock morning Mass, and at 7 o'clock on Friday evenings, preceded by a holy hour beginning at 6. In today's bulletin, you will find envelopes for a diocesan collection for earthquake relief in Turkey and Syria. Last week, there was an insert about various ways that you can give. The envelopes today are specifically for the diocesan collection. You can uh, in, uh, bring them back anytime in the next couple of weeks. If you're paying by check, please make the check payable to the Basilica. So choose whichever way you would like to contribute to the earthquake relief but please do contribute. This year, we are reviving an old tradition, the St. Patrick's Day Tea. The tea will be held on Sunday, March 19th in the Parish Hall. Tickets will be on sale over the next two weekends, and advanced tickets are necessary. And there's a lovely little write-up in the bulletin with a little bit of the history of the tea and its association with the Sisters of Loretto, who uh, ministered here on Catholic Hill for many years. This afternoon, from 3 to 6, there will be guided tours of the Basilica in association with Guelph Heritage Days. If you've never taken a tour of the Basilica, it is very well worthwhile. The gift shop is open in the parish hall immediately after Mass. And this week, the lamps at the Regina Celi Shrine burn in loving memory of Stephen Wallace and the deceased members of the Semlak family. The Lord be with you. <clears throat> Bow down for the blessing. May, bo <clears throat> May bountiful blessing, O Lord, we pray, come down upon your people, that hope may grow in tribulation, virtue be strengthened in temptation, and eternal redemption be assured through Christ our Lord. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace. The recessional hymn is number 369, O Merciful Redeemer, 369. <laughs>